Next, let's take a look at the nucleus. So this double membrane bound structure, often referred to as the cell's command center, um, houses the genetic material and orchestrates its transcription, replication, regulation, and all of the other essential functions associated with the DNA. Um, the nucleus's structure uh, or structural integrity, rather, uh, is maintained by a structure called the nuclear envelope. It's a double lipid bilayer dotted with uh, nuclear pores that allow controlled molecular exchange between the nucleus and the cytoplasm. So this is where uh, mRNA transcripts are going to move from inside the nucleus out into the cytoplasm and even to the uh, endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, within the nuclear envelope resides the chromatin, uh, this is most familiar to you probably as the, the double helix and the chromosomes. So this is DNA wrapped around specialized proteins called histones. Uh, during cell division, chromatin condenses into chromosomes and uh, this ensures the faithful distribution of the genetic material into the daughter cells by condensing it down so it more uh, clearly can be packaged and separated. All right. Uh, functionally, the nucleus serves as a repository for the cell's genetic instructions, right? The, the guidebook for uh, protein synthesis and all other cellular activities. Um, it also contains the nucleolus, which is uh, a substructure dedicated to ribosomal RNA synthesis. Uh, and then ribosome assembly, which uh, is, of course, an, really, plays a really important role in protein synthesis. Uh, that brings us to the endomembrane system. So this is a complex framework that manages many cellular uh, processes. It's an interconnected network of uh, membrane compartments and includes the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, and some other uh, membrane-bound structures. It facilitates a large range of functions from protein synthesis to intracellular trafficking and uh, waste disposal. So let's look at those in more detail. So the endoplasmic reticulum, also called the ER, is a multifaceted membranous network, multifaceted, meaning that it has different faces, okay? Uh, and it plays a really important role in protein synthesis, as well as uh, lipid um, packaging and uh, adjustments being made to it. Um, it orchestrates the folding of proteins and mediates their transport within the cell. So proteins, right, the mRNA transcript is made in the nucleus. It goes to the ER where it's then transcribed into the protein. It folds it in the right way. Make sure that it's folded in the right way. Any that are misfolded are sent to the waste disposal. Um, properly folded ones are then sent on to their uh, correct location uh, via the Golgi apparatus, which we'll look at in just a second. Um, this really extensive dynamic structural uh, network is going to re really carefully manage protein quality, um, helps to manage uh, lipid homeostasis. So, right, lipids, that phospholipid bilayer, this is where it's packaged properly and with the right proteins and other components attached to it um, before it's then sent on to, say, up to the plasma membrane where it's going to then... Uh, become part of the membrane or into a different organelle where it might go. Um, all right, so the endoplasmic reticulum's morphology, what it looks like, uh, is characterized by this array of interconnected tubules and flattened sacs. Um, they collectively form this continuous membrane system and it looks kind of like a maze. Um, it's classified into two different regions. The rough ER, which is gonna have um, ribosomes, uh, actually, attached to, uh, to it, um, and then smooth ER, which is going to um, specialize in lipid metabolism, calcium storage also, and detoxification. Um, this is really interesting. The um, endomembrane system plays a really important role in clearing your body of things like ethanol, uh, or like if you consume like uh, pain medications, like Tylenol produces uh, a a byproduct that has to be metabolized by, by specialized cells to get it out of your system. And, and this uh, the endoplasmic reticulum plays an important role in that. All right, Golgi apparatus. Uh, you can think of this as the post office, all right? Uh, this is where all the proteins and lipids, the modifications are completed. They're sorted, they're tagged, 
and packaged to be distributed throughout the cell, or in some cases, um, to be sent into the extracellular space uh, as messengers or any array of other things. Um, some things are gonna end up going to specific organelles. Uh, some will go to the plasma membrane. Like I said, they might be incorporated into the plasma membrane or they might be released. Um, the image we have here shows the Golgi apparatus uh, with a transmission electron microscope. And you can see um, all these little semicircular stacks, little flattened rings. Um, and there, let's see, show them a little picture. You can see all these little, little sacks. Um, and we're seeing it here, it's kind of an orange uh, color in the cartoon. Um, but yeah, that's all these little, these little vesicles that are make up the, the little sacs and move throughout the cell. Uh, how do they move throughout the cell? Well, they're not just free floating, right? They are attached to uh, special little proteins on the cytoskeleton and they're moved through the cell via the cytoskeleton networks, highways, if you will. Uh, all right. Now let's take a look at lysosomes. So lysosomes are, again, they're membrane-bound vesicles, uh, which is just a fancy way to say storage bag, really. Uh, they contain digestive enzymes that break down all sorts of worn out and excess things in the cell. So you have a mitochondria that wears out, no problem. Fuse it with a lysosome and digest it. Maybe you're a macrophage and you're looking around, you know, through the respiratory tract and you find a bacteria. Oh engulf that bacterium and fuse it with a lysosome and digest it for its component parts. Um, phagocytosis, cell eating. Uh, we'll talk about that more later. Um, let's see. So the digestive enzymes that are inside the lysosome is very important that they stay inside the lysosome because if they were to get released into the cell, it'll kill the rest of the cell. So uh, a little bit more about some of these storage uh, vacuoles, right? storage compartments. So we have vesicles and vacuoles. Those are just membrane-bound sacs that function for storage and transport. Um, vesicles can fuse with other membrane-bound organelles. So if you have you know, a phospholipid bilayer, you can merge with something else that has a phospholipid bilayer. Um, vacuoles are somewhat larger than vesicles, um, and they tend not to fuse with organelles. So vacuoles are larger storage spaces. And then we have peroxisomes, which are small round organelles enclosed by a single membrane, and they carry out oxidation reactions that break down fatty acids and amino acids. Um, so like old proteins that need to be broken down and go to the peroxisome. Um, the byproduct of these reactions is hydrogen peroxide. And again, it has to stay inside its special little space or it will, um, it will destroy the cell, it'll, it'll hurt it. So this having really good, well-contained membrane-bound spaces is very important for cell function. Nearly everyone remembers this one, the powerhouse of the cell, the mitochondria, right? Uh, these are really fascinating organelles whose evolutionary origin is as a free-living alpha proteobacterium, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, make sure that you are familiar with the different structures shown in this image and note that they contain their own DNA. Mm. All right.